What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. I was going to say VGC, but the DLC video. Um, now, this is going to be a quicker video because, oh my god, I'm really mad. I just recorded this entire video with no audio, and I'm also recording this right before I go to work today, so I just wasted 17 minutes of my day. <laughs> that was not fun. Anyways, um, I, I, let's just get into it. I'm, I'm not going to waste any more time. We're talking about the DLC news. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and let's get into it. So, what I want to cover very, very briefly today is going to be the returning Pokemon that we have in the Indigo Disc in the Teal Mask confirmed, um, as well as the new info that we have about the abilities that the three, I believe they're legendary Pokemon, I don't know, the three Pokemon in the DLC, Fezzanipity, Okidogi, and Monkey Dory have, because their ability is a little busted. Anyways, let's get into it. So I'm going to discuss um, each one of these Pokemon very briefly and explain how I think they're going to impact the game um, and what viability they might have in a terrestrialization format. So let's start off with the Pokemon from the Indigo Disc. So Seal and Dugong, they're water ice types. They have access to fake out. They're decently fast. I don't think they're going to be very good. They're Gen 1 Pokemon. They're sort of stuck in that Gen 1. I have bad stats. Cool, you know, um, but as far as other Pokemon that are returning, let me delete a ton of these. These are from a previous video. Um, as far as the other Pokemon that are returning, Executor uh, implies the return of Alolan Executor. And while Executor is a pretty decent like Pokemon with like Trick Room and Sleep Powder and stuff, which by the way, Sleep Powder Pokemon in the game is actually really big. We don't have a lot of Sleep Powder users. We have like Lilligant and I think that's it. Um, it can be pretty impactful with like Chlorophyll and stuff. But I think Alone Executor actually has some pretty high capability for being viable this gen because of terrestrialization. Um, it's already a really good Trick Room setter um, as well as like a really decent like Trick Room abuser. It has, you know, access to Giga Drain, Energy Ball, as well as uh, Draco Meteor and stuff. And it also has a signature move Dragon Hammer, which I don't think anything else gets that. Maybe one other thing gets it, but it's a really weirdly specific niche that it has, but it doesn't use its attack stat. Um, I think the reason it's going to be pretty decent is because it has like these really awesome stats, uh, but its typing makes it super, super, super frail. It's weak to bug, poison, ice, dragon, fairy, uh, flying. It's weak to a lot of things, right? Grass dragon is not a good defensive typing. With this, it can actually terastalize into one of its coverage typings. Like turning into a fire type for this guy wouldn't be the worst. You're already not going to want to throw off like a water type move into this thing. And it has the tools to beat water types. Um, so like being able to turn into a fire type and become like a really decent fire type under Trick Room is actually really nice for it. So I think it has some potential. Flygon I do think has some potential as well. However, it's not going to be able to overcome the bad stat allegations. 100 attack, 100 speed is just not cutting it. And I think the only time I've ever seen it do work is when people choice band it and run like u-turn earthquake and stuff right um however it could now terrestrialize into a steel type and only have two weaknesses in fighting and uh in fighting and fire and in that way it can actually run like dragon dance my caps lock is on dragon dance uh terra blast with like terra steel and like dragon claws its last move and then it's actually not that bad it actually can like 1v1 a, a decent amount of pokemon that way I can actually click Dragon Dance here. Dragon Dance, Terror Blast, Earthquake, um, Dragon Claw. Yeah, because uh, then it's only it's it's only gonna be weak to like fighting and fire, uh, and it has like the tools to beat fire types. So yeah, it's actually some decent potential there. Um, the next one that's returning is Whimsicott. So I want to compare Whimsicott to you know Murkrow and Tornadus. Mostly Tornadus because Murkrow's sort of gone. Um, Tornadus is really good because it has access to like Prankster Tailwind along with a bunch of other very powerful moves like Bleak Wind Storm, um, not Body Slam, like a Bleak Wind Storm, Taunt and stuff. Whimsicott is interesting because it, it is similar to Tornadus, but rather than focusing on the offensive aspect of being a Tailwind Prankster Pokemon, it's more the support aspect. It's frailer, but it does have access to moves like Encore. Um, it has access to the screens. If you want to run Memento and be a crazy person, yeah, you can do that. 
Uh, it does have access to just a lot of like really, really powerful duels. Fake tears could be like really disgusting. Uh, but I think that Whimsicott is going to be a monster with the Covert Cloak. Rather than having to build this thing like a max special attack, max speed, or max HP, max speed with a Focus Sash, you can actually just give it like a Covert Cloak and just really, really bulk this thing out. And you only really have to be faster than Tornadus. So like a level 50 Tornadus. What speed does that hit? I believe that hits 180. Because it's the same as like Mousehold. No, it hits 179. So if you want to hit like 180 and then you're able to taunt opposing tornadoes you're at level 50 and then you're able to taunt like opposing tornadoes then you can like throw the rest into like your bulk it's not a lot but like yeah you can like do stuff with that covert cloak means you can't get like faked out you have access to like taunt and encore and stuff it's actually a really good pokemon next up snorlax snorlax is in previous formats, very broken. In this format, I think it's going to be good for keeping Fluttermane in check because it has 160 HP, 110 special defense, 110 attack. Um, and it's like a really, really good Trick Room Pokemon. Belly Drum, Earthquake, or Rock Slide with like a Terrastalization to, you know, make it hit harder. Um, Facade isn't bad. You know, it lost access to, um, to Return, which was its best move. But also body slam is like pretty decent you could do like drum lax like this right protect belly drum earthquake body slam uh with gluttony and a figgy berry gluttony allowing you to eat the figgy berry at half health meaning that if you belly drum you go up to 83 percent so like that's actually really decent it used to have access to like this really busted uh combination of like recycle figgy berry it heals you for 50 percent health uh and stuff so like that was also very good um curse lax could also make a return uh if the format's a little bit slower however you know, the, the format has been kind of fast recently. So I don't know. I think maybe Curse Lax next to like Tinglu is like pretty decent. Like you wouldn't be able to really get KO'd by a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty it's a pretty good Pokemon. I, I think that uh, Curse Lax could be uh, a really big threat in VGC. Now, Ninetales is also confirmed to be returning in the uh, in the Teal Mask. However, it's not Ninetales that matters. That Pokemon's garbage. It's Alolan Ninetales. Now, Alolan Ninetales has access to fast Aurora Veil icy wind encore and blizzard now before oh and also snow warning before we had to use a bomb of snow and a bomb of snow stats aren't the best it's a little bit more good on the offensive side um but a little of nine tails being able to set up the veil fast by itself rather than relying like on like iron bundle to do it uh is actually really solid it might only have like 95 defense but you have to keep in mind with the new snow mechanics that defense stat in the in the uh, in the snow is increased by 50%. So I believe that goes up to like what 142. If you let's 95 times 1.5, like yeah, like 142 ish, right? Um, and that's gonna be very 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 threatening. It's gonna make it so Alolan Nine Tails is not only you know uh, a decent special attacker with like access to Blizzard with 100% accurate uh, accuracy, but also it's gonna be very difficult to KO on the physical side and the special side with max HP because it has good special defense already. Uh, and then when you're stacking the snow plus Aurora Veil, it becomes pretty bulky. And wh while, yes, you know, Ice and Fairy is like one of the frailest typings ever, uh, you're not going to really like have too much issues living physical hits. So, yeah, I think Alola Nine Tails is actually going to be really amazing for the metagame. Milotic. Now, Milotic, I want to talk about this one specifically um, because in the trailer, that's the Scald animation in this game. Some people have been. I think some people have been coping, right? They've been like, oh, it could be chilling water, right? No, that is clearly Scald. And we know because the only Pokemon in the game with Scald currently, because they took it away from literally everything else, is Volcanion. Volcanion does the exact same animation when it uses Scald. Now, there are two routes here, and it is A. Well, there are three. A, this is an Ice Punch Blaziken moment, which if you don't know, in the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire trailers, we saw Blaziken using Ice Punch, didn't actually get it in the game. Um, or it could also be that move tutors are returning and Scald is now a move tutor that you can give to Pokemon. This would imply a lot of things that are very scary, such as Gastrodon regaining access to Scald, um, such as Iron Bundle, possibly, but probably not getting Scald because it's a nice type. Uh, I hope it doesn't, that would break Iron Bundle. Or the, uh, the third thing, would be that only Milotic gets Scald and it automatically becomes like OU in singles, but also one of the best VGC Pokemon this gen because it can 
be a bulky water type with the access to burn a thing. Um, and I would actually prefer that it is just my Lodic that gets scald. I think that'd be really cool for it. It would give my Lodic a, a nice little niche. And I was a, I was a little bit of a my Lodic head in 2018. I really liked it in that format. Um, it's a really decent versus like, you know, Lander Astherian, uh, versus Incineroar. It's actually like a hard Incineroar counter. Incineroar does not beat this thing. But yeah, I liked, I liked, you know, Scald, Coil, Recover, um, and like Hypnosis sets. I thought it was a really good Pokemon. I really like my Lodic. So I genuinely hope that this thing is the only thing that gets Scald. Next up, I want to talk about the, uh, the DLC Pokemon, the, uh, the, Pheasantipity, Monkey Dory, and uh, Okie Dogie. They have really stupid names, but I love them so much. Uh, they're really goofy looking, but oh my god, they're going to be a threat. They have a new ability called Toxic Chain. Toxic Chain is like Poison Touch on steroids. So you know how Poison Touch is a 30% chance to activate if you make contact with uh, any other Pokemon with like a contact move, like you use like Fake Out, you have a chance to poison. This is... Uh, presumably the same chance. I would probably say 30. Oh my god. That alarm scared the hell out of me. It is my alarm because I cannot wake up in the morning. Um, <laughs> sorry for everyone who heard that. Uh, so, they have this ability, and presumably it's going to be 30% chance, just like uh, Poison Touch. I hope it's 20. I hope it's less accurate. Uh, but I hope it's less, less of a chance to activate. But this move will activate on non-contact moves as well. So you see the Pheasantipity using Air Slash on a Masquerada and then it gets badly poisoned. So it's not, it's not poison, it's toxic. This means that, let's say that like Monkey Dory, let's say Monkey Dory has like Annihilate stats, right? Which means that is a decent speed stat, it's pretty bulky and, and it has access to Rock Slide. If we have a Rock Slide that can also toxic and flinch, that's kind of absurd. Um, if, if these things get access to like spread moves and the move just has a, a random chance to, I don't know, become a very powerful mortal spin, then these things are going to be ridiculous on stall teams. And I love that. That's another common big stall W. Uh, I don't know what their typings are going to be. I'm personally in the camp that uh, they're water, grass, and fire type like starter Pokemon, but um, their secondary typing is most likely poison. Water Poison, Grass Poison, Fire Poison. These are all pretty cool typings. Um, you know, Grass Poison isn't the most, you know, uh, unique thing. But Fire Poison, there's only like one other of those, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Uh, that's basically all the new info we got regarding competitive stuff. There's some stuff like, you know, new clothes and some story stuff that I don't really care about for the channel. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.